All right, so here's our uh, new learning activity that we're going through. We're going to be talking about uh, dependent variables, independent variables. We're going to be talking about is something linear, right? And, and whether it's an equation or uh, whether it's a set of ordered pairs, that's what we're about to get into. So let's talk about two things before we can actually talk about uh, whether or not something is linear. Uh, the first thing is a dependent variable. Uh, and you should probably pause the video and write this down so you have the definition. What this is, is uh, the variable whose value is determined by the independent variable, which we'll get to in just a second. It is most often called the y value. And the videos that we just got done with and the lessons that we just went through, we talked about y values being the range. Well, that's basically the dependent variables. Um, dependent, when I think of the word dependent, uh, outside of even math, uh, I think being dependent on somebody, like when I was being raised uh, as, as a kid, I, re I relied and I depended on my parents. Uh, they made choices uh, and I had to follow those choices. They made choices for me. And as I got older, became an adult, <laughs> actually did. <laughs> uh, I, I'm here uh, and, and now I make my own decisions. I'm now what I would consider independent and I have my own child and who is dependent on me. I make choices for her. So here I have dependent variables. Uh, the same thing kind of goes with math. math and math. Uh, once you have an independent variable, the dependent variable depends on what that is. So let's look at what an independent variable is then. This is the variable whose value is subject to choice. Uh, just like when you're independent. I get to have choices of my own. Uh, I'm an adult. I'm out on my own. And so I get to make choices. Just like the independent variable is, it gets to be chosen. Uh, the independent variable determines a v-dependent variable. It is most often the x value or those domain values that we talked about previously. All right. So that's what independent and dependent variables are. Again, uh, if you get to choose the independent variable, the x value, and that should determine what the dependent variable is. Because no matter what this is, the dependent variable changes based off of this independent variable. So let's go see what that. What, what are we talking about here? Okay. Well, here's an equation. x plus y equals 6. We just said that the x values are the independent variables, and the y values are the dependent variables. Uh, so x is independent, x is independent, and uh, so we've got two of these variables here, uh, but independent gets choice, right? Right. So independent gets choice. So if I choose x, that should tell me what y is, right? And this is what I mean. If I say, hey, x is 1, what does y have to be so that they add up to 6? 5. 5, because 1 plus 5 would be 6, right? So here we go. 1 plus 5 is 6. That's definitely a solution to this equation. But there's, there's two variables here, right? So I choose one, and that kind of makes the choice for the other already. It's like me being a parent, I make a choice for my child, and, well, I made the choice, and now they have to follow along. Okay, what are some other values? Like, pause the video and think for a second. Uh, what if, you know, if you chose next value, what could be a y value? There's a bunch of them, so take a second to think about that. Right? Well, if I chose x to be, I don't know, 2, what would y have to be? It would have to be 4, right? Because 2 plus 4 is 6. And again, we chose for the independent variable, and that dependent, the, the dependent variable kind of depended on what we chose, okay? And then we got 3. That makes the other one have to be 3. If we chose 4, the other one would have to be 2. If we chose 5, the other one would have to be 1. Uh, 6, the other one would have to be 0. But don't get caught up in just positive numbers, right? What if we chose 7? Well, that means the other number, the y value, would have to be negative 1. Uh, 8, negative 2, uh, 9, and negative 3. All these add up to 6. And, but don't get caught up in just integers either. Like, think about all the different numbers there could be. If I chose 1.1, then y would have to be 4.9. If I chose 1.2, then y would have to be 4.8. And until even with big numbers, right? If I chose negative 99,999, uh, well, then that would mean that this other one would have to be 100,005, right? So there's all these solutions, and we could sit here all day and all night trying to come up with solutions, um, and it would probably be a pain to write them all out. Speaking of writing out these solutions, um, because they are x's and y's, we already know that we can write ordered pairs as x comma y. And so we have all these solutions in ordered pairs, again, as an x comma y. And all these points are solutions. How long would I, am I going to be here writing out all the possible solutions? I mean, this is just a little bit uh, of all of the infinite amount, right? So um, how can we list these out? Uh, well, there is a way to show all these solutions. 
And that's just simply by doing this. We are going to take all these ordered pairs, all those solutions, and we are going to graph them. Uh, because once we start graphing points, we're going to start seeing a pattern. Let's do that really quick. So we've got 1, 5 here. Remember, this is x and y. x means uh, over 1 and then up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 2, 4, so over 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, 3, 3, over 3, up 3. Let's see, it's 4, 2. Uh, right here, we've got 5, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1. We've got 6, 0, it means over 6, and then don't go up or down because it's a 0. We've got 7, negative 1, over 7, down 1. You guys see a pattern form in here? 8, negative 2, and then 9, negative 2. Three. Looks like a line. It looks like it's a line. So would you say that this is linear? I would say so because I see all these ordered pairs and I'm starting to form a pattern here uh, on a graph and it looks like it's forming a straight line. So x plus y equals 6, is that linear? Yes, because the relationships that I'm seeing between the independent and the dependent variables are linear, right? Uh, this would take forever. If I were to go back and start adding all those other points, I would start seeing all the in-betweens, right? And that's kind of what we were talking about, right? And I could sit here forever and, and list all these solutions and keep on putting all these ordered pairs up here, uh, but what's what, what eventually am I going to be drawing here? A line! I'm going to end up drawing a line, right? So I'm going to end up with something that looks like a straight line. It's linear. Okay, and so that, that line would represent all of the solutions to the equation uh, x plus y equals 6. But I don't think we want to sit here and graph this for forever, so let's take a look at how we can figure out something's linear by not graphing it. The way we're going to do that is what's called rate of change. Rate of change is this. First, pause the video and write it all down because this is probably the most important part of this whole lesson and the next lesson and probably the so lesson we'll after it. that. And Just write it down. Okay, so we have a rate of change here is the ratio. It is the ratio between the dependent variable, remember that's our y value, and the independent variable x. Remember, a ratio is basically a fraction. Okay, A numerator and a denominator gives us a ratio. So the rate of change is going to be the change in the y over the change in x. Not just y over x, but the change in y over the change in x. And because I'm a mathematician, I'm lazy. And so I don't like to write change in every single time. So in math, we use this symbol right here. It looks like a triangle. It's just a Greek letter, and the, that letter is called delta. So it's, it looks like a triangle, and we call it delta y over delta x. It's the same thing as saying change in y over the change in x. Okay. Whether or not an equation or a, a relationship of ordered pairs or whatever it may be, whatever we're talking about here, we consider it linear if this rate of change is, and it's only linear, so it's, well, let me read this out, an equation is considered linear if and only if the rate of change is constant or doesn't change. In other words, uh, it stays the same. So when we go to start calculating the rate of change between all these points or on a graph, we're looking for a constant rate of change, a rate of change that doesn't change. It's always the same. So let's put that definition into practice now. Here I have a table of ordered pairs. I've got uh, x, 2, 4, 8, 2, 11, 1, and 20, negative 2. Uh, I want to identify whether or not that shows a linear relationship. Okay. So if I were to use a graph, um, well, which we have here, let's go ahead and do that. Let's plot the points, see if it makes a straight line. I've got 2, 4 uh, over 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. We've got 8, 2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2. Uh, 11, 1 goes off my graph, Mr. Craig. You can go pretend you get it, but that's another reason why we need to figure this out. Well, this is, it's so 11, 1. Oh, hey, well, you know what? It's actually starting to look linear. If I were to go out to 20, negative 2, uh, I think this would actually look like it's linear. But here's the thing. Do we always have graph paper in front of us? And is it always going to be that our ordered pairs are going to be on the graph, right? This is a problem we're having. So this is something we need to look into, um, especially because ordered pairs will never be always less than 10 or greater than negative 10. It's, they're always going to be bigger, right? So uh, graphs don't always help. So let's talk about the definition of rate of change. The rate of change, again, uh, the rate of change, which I'm going to abbreviate and call ROC, rate of change. Because I'm lazy. 
because I'm lazy is the same reason why I use delta. Exactly. It's the change of y over the change in x. Okay, well, change in is just looking how are we how are we moving from one thing to the other. So here I have my y values, uh, and you can tell I'm going from four to two to one to negative two in my range values here. So if I wanted to find the change in y, it's as simple as saying how do I go from four to two? How do I go from two to one? How do I go from one to negative two? And the same thing applies to our change in x's. Well, I got 2, 8, 11, and 20. How is that changing? What's happening here? Right? So let's go through those change, of, uh, change in x's really quick. How do you go from 2 to 8? Well, I have to add 6. you got to add 6, right? So let's add 6 here. Uh, how do you go from 8 to 11? Uh, add 3. That's going to be add 3. And then 11 to 20? Add 9. It's adding 9, right? But the rate of change is not the same, so it's not linear. That's a good question. A lot of people go, well, that can't be the same, right? Because they're all different. That's not the case. We can't stop there because I didn't say the change in x has to be the same. I didn't even say the change in y has to stay, stay the same. I said the ratio between these two things has to be the same. Okay, so I have a ratio, that's what the rate of change is, between change in y and change in x. I'm looking for change in y divided by change in x. So let's go look at our change in y's real quick. How do you go from 4 to 2? Minus 2. That's minusing 2. Uh, 2 to 1? Minus 1. Minus 1. 1 to negative 2 is minus, minus three. 3. Now, again, keep in mind, rate of change is the change in the y's over the change in x's. Oh boy, I used different colors. There we go. Uh, so basically what I want is I want this value divided by that value. So we have the change in y over the change in x. That's going to be your negative 2 over... That's your change in y over your change in x, which is a positive 6. Now, we could plug that into a calculator or simplify it in our heads real quick. That's going to be negative 1 third, right? Same thing goes for the next value. We have negative 1, change in y over your change in x, which is 3. So we got negative 1 divided by a positive 3, right? So let's do that. Negative 1 divided by 3. Oh, Dang, that looks really familiar. That's also negative one-third. You can see that our rate of change is constant so far. It stayed the same so far. Let's go to our last one and see if it works out. Uh, so change in y, so negative 3 uh, divided by your change in x, which is 9. So negative 3 divided by 9. Uh-huh. Yep, i got to keep my colors the same. So that would be our change in our x. That's going to be mm, negative 3 divided by 9. One third. Oh my goodness, that's also negative one third. And so now because the definition of uh, rate of change and linear uh, from rate of change is this. If these numbers, if the rate of change is the same between all these points, then what we're talking about is linear. So is this table linear? Yes, because the rate of change is the same. So this is linear. We'll find out. Yeah, so again, one more time. If the, there is a constant rate of change, it doesn't change, then the equation is linear. What is that rate of change? Negative one third. That rate of change is negative one third. Okay, well, how about that? Go ahead and try the problems below, follow the same example, and you should do well.